What's going on? The Ape Coach from Six Pack Gaming, where we bring you the best play to earn NFT games and new metaverse projects. Now, today we have another update video here on Cyverse. They have their NFT sale coming out very soon here on the 22nd of February at 2222 UTC. And we've got some beta gameplay footage to show you guys what it's going to look like at the uh, launch coming up here very, very shortly and some more details on the game and let you know all about it. So be sure to smash that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe and got notifications turned on and let's dive right into this. And if that wasn't enough, we are also going to be drawing the two winners of the free diver NFTs from the last video here when we did the AMA with Cyverse. We're gonna be drawing the winners in today's video. So you're definitely gonna wanna stay tuned for that. All right, so here is Cyverse. We are gonna go through the white paper here give you a general idea of all the game features and mechanics and everything that this game has to offer first and then i'm going to actually showcase some of the beta gameplay footage we've got access to the test net so we're going to show you exactly you know what the game is going to look like at the first initial launch so again make sure you smash that thumbs up button and let's get into it here let's jump to the white paper all right so cybers is a cyberpunk inspired blockchain play to earn game on the binance smart chain collect nft divers and earn creds tokens with two different gameplays so the initial game is going to be the mining mode okay so this is more of a passive earnings mode so you become a hacker access different level servers and you earn credits Fred's tokens and then in the future they're going to be bringing out a turn-based game as well all right and then this is just a little bit about binance smart chain and then our mission is to build an immersive gaming experience while creating a balanced and buffered economy for our games so that is very key is creating that balanced sustainable economy our vision is to create the next generation metaverse p2e nft game allowing players globally to generate passive income so always love passive earnings all right so here's the story to give you a little bit of background info and kind of get you immersed in what this game is about so Cynet creation the year is 2271 technologically advanced cities around the world join forces and link their systems to each other creating a vast network called Cynet. the network was constantly updated with new information and was shared with everyone which sped up advancements in all aspects of sciences literature and the arts soon enough more cities and then whole countries were inspired to join Cynet grew extensively until quite literally almost the entire world was covered by this vast network. Eventually, the network spilled out towards the stars and soon solar systems were linked. This is when Cynet became Cyverse because it expanded into the universe. Um, as if all this was too good to be true, when mankind was advancing towards a non-currency based society, not everyone agreed with its trajectory. Some started to put price tags on crucial information, almost hijacking it and asking for ransom. This created a chain reaction and the once free information flow came to a halt and the information utopia faded away. All right, so the whole concept here is that info is supposed to be freely shared and accessible to everyone. And then people started, you know, capitalizing on that and taking, uh, you know, trying to take advantage of people for information. So then it came to the dark days, nearly eradicated poverty started reappearing along with a host of other issues. The network became centralized and the flow of information started to be monitored and regulated. Even the information that was already out there was recaptured and suspended in various data blocks throughout the cybers. Factions and mega corporations formed to fight over information through espionage, manipulation, and sabotage. So the world's just going into turmoil over who can control this information, essentially. People have almost forgotten the origin of cybers and how information was free. For people who cared about information, the past turned into a utopian prophecy, seemingly unattainable, because they've forgotten that it was once actually real. Then there's Toshinaka. One day, a man called Toshinaka accidentally gets hold of a loose data block and upon examining it finds a piece of data from the utopian past confirming the utopia was actually real he developed an algorithm called exegesis that translates and interprets data into virtual imagery combined with the utopian data block toshinaka creates a benign virus and releases it into the cybers before he disappears divers 
Some people who stumbled on the exegesis floating in the network realized what kind of verse they lived in and started looking for more data. The number of those people slowly grew and developed methods of effective data diving and hacking. The ones who target big data vaults are called divers. They dive for crucial data that is withheld by mega corps and other factions and release it out into the public network. They use special diving slash hacking pods. With the data they gain, they also gain a form of current that the divers called creds. First, the currency was used among themselves in a small group of people, but as they released more data into the public, more and more places started to accept creds as an official currency. Cybers slowly begins to be reborn in the fight against large factions and mega corps who are trying everything to stop the divers starts. So this is very cool. This is uh, just kind of leading into the story. I really like how they kind of developed a whole background story that is uh, very relatable to the whole concept of decentralization and cryptocurrency and having this sort of autonomous ownership and all of that sort of stuff. So very, very cool. And then again, you can go to their medium and read up more about the uh, characters and all of that. Each of these guys has their own backstories as well. So the lore and the backstories and, and the character development in this is really, really cool. So you can kind of see a little bit about them. You know, Biork suffered a sphere injury as a kid, causing her to replace 60% of her body cybernetically. Her brain is fully organic, yet she has um, advanced memory capabilities and the ability to recognize complex patterns without any cerebral augmentation. So very, very cool. You can check out more of their stories on Medium here. They've got ones on all of the main uh, characters which is awesome and then let's take a look at the roadmap so they started q3 2021 so it's been you know in the works for about six months or so um they you know put the team together and all of that if you guys missed that last video we actually did an ama with the team you guys can hear straight from them all about uh you know the game and how this sort of came to life and Great, great, uh, great team as well. Super friendly. So then we are coming up. We're here still in Q1 2022. So we have the NFT Genesis presale that is coming up February 22nd at 2222 UTC. If you come to their Twitter, um, it is all over here, right here. Do not miss out NFT Genesis collection presale Tuesday 222 at 2222 PM UTC. All right. So, um, not very hard to remember, just every two you can think of, right? <laughs> 22nd, 02, 2022, 2222. 22. A whole lot of twos, okay? That's when the sale's going on. Um, and then there's the IDO coming for the tokens, the creds tokens, and then the game launch of the mining mode is following right after. So I believe they're aiming for like end of February, early March kind of thing for this initial game launch. So it's coming up very quickly here. And then Q2 is developing into the turn-based game. Q3 is, um, you know, and beyond is uh, further development. So let's take a look at the mining mode because that's what's going to be launching here in just a little bit and then we'll show you what that actually looks like in the test net as well so from the story you guys got a general understanding of you know what the game is about there's the nft divers these are the data divers or hackers that are looking for this information in you know on the cybers or whatever and so basically you have these NFT divers that you send into different servers. They try to hack the servers and obtain these creds tokens when they do that. So it says how to hack the servers. For divers to penetrate and hack servers, their hacking power must be equal or exceed the power of the firewall. So very cool. Divers will use pods to connect and travel to the terminal. Each pod will have a passenger capacity that will also be defined by its rarity. Okay, so you're gonna be able to have multiple divers in one of these pods trying to hack into these servers. Once the hackers are on the pods, they proceed to enter the terminal as a hacking unit and choose the server that has the same or less firewall power. So that's allowing you to actually break through that firewall. Each terminal can only hack one time per 24 hours with a reset time of 00, zero uh, UTC every, every day. Now the rewards granted to players for the creds earned is already defined on each of the servers. So you'll be able to see that before you go into it and know you know how much you're gonna be getting from, from a successful hacking attempt. And uh, the higher the difficulty, the higher the rewards. So that's where the higher uh, level uh, divers that you have 
they can access those higher security firewall servers and you'll be able to gain higher rewards that way. And then it says our game will have an Oracle system which will stabilize the rewards in relation to the dollar value. And then there is a withdrawal fee as well to help with the sustainability. So there's a 2% uh, claim fee regardless of how long you uh, wait to claim it, but it starts at 30% and then it'll be deducted by 2% every day until the 14th day. And then you'll just pay 2% to claim your rewards. And then those rewards go back to the reward pool or that fee, sorry. Let's go over the divers here. You've got five different rarities, one through five. Here are the drop chances, 45, 34, 15, five, and 1% only is R5. And then here is their respective hacking power. So the R1s have 20 to 50, our fives are all the way up at 200 to 250 so about um you know 10 times the hacking power of the r1s which is pretty significant the way to attain these uh divers there's going to be basically three different types of crates these are like blind boxes a gold gives you six divers silver is three bronze is one and then these are kind of their values in busd um respected to the Oracle. So $20 for one bronze diver, 120 for six. So regardless of what sort of crate you're getting, um, it's gonna be the same price per diver, it looks like. And then there's the backstories again that you can kind of check out. You've got Cyborg, you've got Maximilian, you've got uh, Fix, you've got Nurk. I kind of like that, the look of Fix. She looked dope, Poncho. Um, and then we have the back door fee. Okay, so you have your divers and then there is this back door fee. Each diver requires a back door to be able to access the servers. It costs one US dollar in bits, which is their second token or creds and is paid for each divers inside the terminal. So if you have like six divers that you're all trying to hack the same server with, each of those has to have a back door, so you're gonna have to pay like $6 essentially for that hack attempt. In addition to the divers, you have these pods. And with my understanding of this, this is similar to like the matrix, you know, where they're connecting to the server essentially. Um, I think that's sort of what these pods are here. So pods are capsules where divers connect to uh, connect to travel to the terminal. There are five types of rarities, which uh, differs in passenger capacity. So again, there's R1 through five, the same sort of drop percents as the um, the divers. And then the R5 will have a capacity of five divers. The R1 will only have one. So if you have a pod with five, you can have five divers all in there hacking the same server at the same time, which will boost your uh, total hacking power, allow you to gain access to higher difficulty servers. Um, and again, there's gonna be the crates. So bronze, one pod, same sort of price as the uh, NFT divers as well. Then there's the terminals, okay? So the terminals are machines that connect all the pods with their respective divers, consolidating all the hacking power as a unit towards the network. So again, like I said, if you have an R5 pod, and you have a bunch, you have five different um, divers in there, it'll kind of take their collective hacking power to be able to access higher uh, difficulty servers. Servers are the high powered computers designed to mine, store and manage bits. So far, 30 servers have been identified and each of them has a different firewall power that can only be hacked by the most experienced divers. Now there is a server fee as well here okay so there's a backdoor fee and a server fee so the servers require paying a fee to connect through the network servers whose firewall power and rewards are higher will have to pay more the terminal fee here will be a percentage of the rewards of each server so for servers one through five the lowest level ones it's six percent of the rewards is charged as like a terminal fee up at the highest ones, it's 11% of the rewards is the terminal fee. But again, those are gonna be offering higher rewards to kind of offset that. And then there's also a lifespan and dismantling fee. So there's a lot of burning mechanisms in this. So this is the terminals have a lifespan of 30 uses. Once completed, it cannot be used unless the terminal is dismantled and rebuilt. The dismantling fee is 20 cents US dollars worth of bits or creds for each hacking power. So so if you have a thousand hacking power between your uh, divers, 20 cents for each of those hacking powers, it's gonna cost $200 to uh, dismantle and rebuild that terminal.
So if you're wanting to be able to like continue to mine that terminal, to hack that terminal, you're gonna have to dismantle it and rebuild it after 30 uses. So again, there's, there's lifespan things to prevent over mining and essentially you know what other games face in terms of like overpopulation there's a bunch of sort of maintenance fees to keep constant utility of the in-game tokens and then there's um withdrawal fees and stuff as well so it says rewards here the rewards will be paid through bits which will be the stable currency of the game this will have a value at par with the dollar and can be changed to creds through our reverse oracle so one bit equals one usdt and because they have the oracle system in place one of the very unique things that they've done which all the other oracle based games have missed is they have a reverse oracle to balance it out so that regardless of when you're kind of entering in and exiting um the price is always going to remain pegged essentially to the us dollar value so that everyone is earning the same amount within the same sort of given time period if that makes sense okay and then there is this dynamic early claim penalty this is extremely unique as well another way to kind of protect um you know fud or organized dumping which a lot of these oracle based games have experienced in the past there's going to be a massive um fee essentially like a penalty for people that claim early on a continual basis okay so this is how this kind of works here here's this spreadsheet so level one of the early claim penalty right so here it is uh you have this kind of uh break even point essentially at six days so at uh, 15 days there's no sort of discount on your withdrawal right so you have to pay a 30 percent withdrawal fee um and then as you go down this reduces by two percent so it's 28 percent withdrawals on day two um and then on day three it's 26 percent and so it goes all the way down and then by um i guess technically this would be the 10th day of accumulating rewards and it's six days left until you're you know at zero um once you pass this point it'll be 12 percent for the withdrawal fee and then beyond that it's you know 10 8 and then it goes down to two percent at the very lowest here and then that's just what it stays at is two percent after 15 days but so here is where the the line is drawn so you have to make it 10 days you have to hold for at least 10 days before you withdraw otherwise you get hit with an early claim penalty so if you claim here on day nine you're gonna have to pay the 14% withdrawal fee, and then you move to level two of early claim penalties, where if you try to withdraw on the first day again, you're gonna end up paying 48% to withdraw those, um, your earnings on that first day, and then it reduces by 3% per day, so you go to 45%, 42%, et cetera, um, and then you get all the way down to 3% afterwards. Um, and then again, if you try to claim before the 10th day, when you're on level two, it pushes you to level three. And then eventually, if you do that for, you know, four times in a row, you claim within the first like nine days by that fifth time you start at a hundred percent. So you literally, if you withdraw on the first day, when you're on level five of the, uh, claiming penalty, you don't get any of your rewards, right? So this is a very cool way to incentivize kind of more longer term holding of the tokens and um, avoiding people just quickly dumping at the, you know, on the first day. Because yeah, maybe people are looking at this and they're like, oh, I can, I can deal with, you know, a 20%, um, you know, reduction in claiming my rewards. I'll just sell it here. But then the next time you go to do that, that puts you in level two of the early claim. So then if you try to do that on the sixth day again, you're going to be paying 33% and then you're paying 34 or 44% then 57, then 70%. So, um, you know, it gets less and less profitable when you claim earlier, as long as you make it past the 10 days though, 
that's when you're kind of in the clear and you're not going to progress to the next um, claim penalty sort of level here but that's that's how that works that i think that's a very unique feature again that's really cool uh the turn-based game is going to be coming in the future they're going to be um having a marketplace as well here so the nft marketplace is a decentralized exchange where players can buy and sell game items it provides liquidity for the assets created through the game and encourages more players to participate in establishing the cybers economy there is going to be a 15 percent tax from the sale price of all items sold on the market and that will go back to the rewards pool so um it is very nice to see that they have taken um a lot of token utility and sustainability into consideration when kind of designing the tokenomics within the game here so here's the token information cybers economy is driven by our main token creds and we aim to keep the economy balanced using a reverse oracle which allows us to balance and maintain the entry price at the same cost there's going to be a total of 10 million creds tokens for the max supply their utility is going to be to mint divers and pods to sell divers pods and terminals in the marketplace and um as some rewards in the mining mode as well as utilizing them for the like back doors and the server fees and all of that sort of stuff okay and then here's just an overview of the token allocation team is 13 percent nine percent marketing six and a half for platform development two percent advisors one and a half percent airdrop two percent seed seven percent ido nine percent for dex liquidity and 50 percent so uh five million tokens for the play to earn rewards which is nice to see um, this just kind of talks about the Oracle. Essentially, it just balances out the entry price with the US dollar value so that everyone's always kind of paying the same price to enter the game. And then the reverse Oracle will work in the reward claim. The moment a player makes a claim, the reverse Oracle will check the value of the token in the market and make a real time conversion to give the tokens equivalent to the existing rewards in game wallet okay that is everything for the white paper that gives you an idea of how the game is going to work now let's actually show you we're going to jump over into the test net and dive into the game itself so i'm pumped for it smash the thumbs up button again make sure you're subscribed got notifications turned on and let's get into this and then after and then after we go over the uh test net sort of uh showcasing we are going to be drawing the winners from that last ama video so i'm excited to see which one of you guys is going to get the free divers there's going to be two that we're giving away here we are on the test net for cybers we are going to go over just the basic sort of functions of the gameplay now keep in mind as it says at the bottom here this is still the beta version so this does not represent the final quality of the game they still want to improve the artwork a lot they still want to um you know adjust some of the functions and all these sort of things so just kind of you know take that for what it is this is not going to be you know the final product but it at least gives you an idea of kind of where things are starting out right now for the beta all right so we come here we're going to have to mint a diver we have um some creds on the test net here so we are going to mint this and we shall see what we get i actually really like this this is kind of cool that it's like counting minting the diver it's got some animated effects here all right so we got a diver with 88 hacking power very very cool oh you can click to burn him as well apparently okay uh so that's one of our divers we also need a pod so let's mint a pod let's see what sort of rarity pod we get and then depending on the pod that we get that'll kind of dictate how many divers we can fit in there so here we have one capacity in this pod i think let's try to get some more pods here see if we can get a higher rarity one ideally that one has a two let's see if we can do a little bit more here we're just going to grab like a few pods grab some of the divers and then we'll showcase um how we go about hacking and earning with these guys all right two two one it is what it is let's mint a few more divers see what we can get here look at that we got merc um or nurk sorry we got biorg maximilian and then we've got a second nurk and second biorg okay so we're gonna you know use our two top ones here nurk and biorg 
we have to create a terminal, okay, so that we can actually, or like set up our terminal, right, so that we can actually start diving into it. So here we have our R2 pod. We are going to select those. I wonder if I can, can you use multiple pods and divers at the same time? You can, okay, so I can just use all, all of these pods and all of these divers. So there we go, we can create a terminal with a total of 276 hacking power with these five divers and these uh, pod slots here. So um, this is saying the total pod slots you can have is five. So let's mint another two pods, let's fill this up and then let's see what uh, happens there. We got another two, nice. So we can actually fit another three divers in here. What is it? What is it? 126. Whoa, yo, she's got a yellow outline around her. Let's go to the terminal. There we go. Now everyone's all uh, showing up here. So we've got all these. So this one's an R3, that one with 126. So we got, we got actually a really decent split. Like we got three R1s, we got four R2s, and then one R3. So not too shabby. We're gonna try to plug in all of these pods, all of these divers. There we go, max diver capacity reached. So we've got eight slots total from our pods. We've got 514 total hacking power with eight divers. Now it is time to go hack. All right, so here are all of these different servers. Um, oh, did I not create my terminal? Okay, I've got to actually create it. Here we go. So there is a terminal creation fee, it looks like. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. Here it is. 514 hacking power. The terminal is all set up and good to go. So out of that, we got eight divers. We had five pods and that cost us 240 creds so not not a whole lot to be honest um okay so we have 500 hacking power so we could take on this guy because this is you know up to or under um our hacking power so we should be able to break through this pretty easily so we're gonna select our terminal up here and then we're gonna go to hack this server and see if we can get this 2800 creds reward or I think bits reward sorry all right hack the server let's go and there we go success so we got 28 bits for server four easy peasy um, and so that would equate to I believe $28 you can only hack it once per day um, so let's see if I'm able to hack any of the other servers though. No. Okay, so you can only hack one server per day. So we got, that's not bad though. We got $28, takes up, you know, no time really. Um, so then we can come back tomorrow and be able to hack additional servers. All right, so that is a basic overview of, you know, just the absolute ground level uh, mechanics and functions of the game so far. Also keep in mind the um, divers that we mint in the initial uh, sale or that we get from the initial sale are going to have the plus 20 hacking power as well. So that's actually pretty huge considering some of those R1 divers only had like 12 hacking power. Ooh, we got another R3, it's got 130. Love it. So that is basically it. So you're gonna have to get your divers, you're gonna have to get your pods, then you're gonna create your terminal out of your divers and pods, and then find which server you wanna hack. It can go all the way from, you know, just 100 hacking power at the least, all the way up to uh, 1500 hacking power. So triple what we currently have, but the reward is substantial there. Uh, 134 or sorry, 13,400, which would be $134. So that is pretty crazy. If you're making 134 bucks a day, 
um, but there's a 60% success rate. So what would that calculate to? If we were to average that out 134 times 0.6, you would be averaging $80.40 per day going for the highest um, server, but you would need to have that hacking power of 1500 or above. So that's pretty um, high, right? That's pretty, uh, pretty up there. But that is uh, great earnings, right? Multiply that by 30. Oops, I just did a, a subtraction there. $2,400 per month, not too shabby. Okay, and then this is just kind of the basic mining mode. And then as the game progresses, they're gonna be introducing the turn-based game mode and all of that as well. Alrighty, so now it is time to draw the two winners of the free diver NFTs from the last video here, the Cybers AMA. We've got the video entered in there. There's 55 comments. Let's see who is going to win it. We got number one coming up. Katarina, pretty unique and sounds like a fire game can't wait all right katarina let's double check to make sure you are in the discord all right katarina there is no results nothing okay unfortunately katarina um that was the final step in the thing so we can't confirm you know you are who you say you are kind of thing so we are going to have to pick another winner unfortunately here we have, who is it? Akil Chintanuri. Um, I love the early claim taxation and increasing it every time you claim the tokens early, but more than the fe features, I like the Cyber's team and their ideology to make this game a sustainable one. I love that too. Awesome. So let's see if Akil is in here. All right, let's take a look, see. Akil, there he is. All right, so we got it. That is our first winner. We love to see it. All right, let's pick the second winner now. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Say, let's go. The early gang, he was one of the first commenters on the video. I'm pretty sure he's in here because he is one of the monkey gang. So let's take a look here. There it is, we've got it, love it. All right, so we have our two NFT Diver winners, congratulations, Say and Akil. We will be uh, getting those to you, I believe, either during or after the um, NFT presale on the 22nd. So be expecting those in just a few days. All right, so that is everything for Cybers for now. Let me know your thoughts. Are you guys excited to pick up your NFTs? on the 22nd you guys looking forward to this game i know i am sure looking forward to seeing how this thing develops and plays out and um really interested to see how the economy develops with all of these burning mechanisms and these uh withdrawal fees and all of these unique elements that they implemented into this as well as just the story development and progression on this i think they have some great backstory and uh character development and stuff so i'm excited for this and can't wait to actually be able to play it live on the main net all right if you guys like this one, you know what to do. Be sure to smash that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe and got notifications turned on so you never miss these new videos with the best play to earn NFT games and new metaverse projects. Last, but of course, not least, just before we hop off here, we have to send a huge shout out to all of the latest subscribers and supporters, the new members of the Monkey Gang, all that good stuff on the channel because again i cannot do it without you guys uh, appreciate all of the support here so let's try to drag this down a little bit and where are we oh my gosh we got so many thank you guys so much you guys are nuts all right so we got jeremy elvira randolph uh timotej uh for some reason it has three <laughs> notifications there um edmund uh tiberdet dudo mariel akash sergio malone big black cat <laughs> sedonio allen and fend asfari deepest gray wang uh, ulysses uh yonatan mar ballista uh rentube teddy frank fernando chinoxia quinn francisco rayuna gino skullfire uh and anrand jan martin uh, Eric, Akil, uh, James, Abel, Glenn, Yan, Gan, Glenn, 
as a monkey gang member. Let's go. Uh, Brian, Walter, Yumi, Madzung, YG49, GM Floors, Tina, Oleg, Mark, ha uh, Hamid, Corey, Baldhead, <laughs> Carl became a member once again. That's a, a uh, re- a rejoin as a member uh calvin gray goose became a member of the monkey gang let's go cap arvin Jawan, uh sg defy flint uh H henrique uh i don't know how to pronounce this one sorry it's uh russian it looks like uh kenny six toes a member of the monkey gang lady lee a member of the monkey gang pow pow yuriko all members of the monkey gang we love it uh maxim subscribe yuri uh again another one i don't know how to pronounce sorry grubby lanny it channel it channel uh whale mark edward andre raul as a member of the monkey gang let's go syed kenzo zor san Catherine, uh, Stefan, Carl, TJ, Fish, Crazy, G uh, GJ, Trevor, Daniel, Angela, Fuad, Tommy, Victor, Brody, James, Frag, Frag out, Frag out, <laughs> Solo, uh, Cher, Junebug, uh, Sala, James, Enhar, Chase, uh, Eric, Paul, Lewis, uh, Eric, Maricon, Awado, E E E P D C NAFTA H D and Ballers. Thank you guys so so much for all the support, all of the incredible love, and all of the new members of the Six Pack Gaming Nation and the Monkey Gang. If you guys again, if you guys want to join the Monkey Gang, we do have the join feature on the channel here. All you gotta do is either click below this video or you come to my channel, you click the join button. There's the various memberships, the Monkey Gang, Gorilla Squad, and Alpha Apes. These are all completely optional, but you do have the option if you want to support the channel a little bit more, you get access to the VIP Discord lounge, um, a special role in the Discord, and some you know cool things of that nature, some early alpha and stuff like that. But again, totally optional. I appreciate each and every one of you guys thank you so so much for watching as always until next time train hard game hard keep making those life-changing gains and we'll see you in the next one peace out everyone